What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and in this video I want to compile all the new developments surrounding Mickey Mouse and his sinking ship of a kingdom in one video. So if you watch till the end, you'll become an expert on the latest when it comes to all the awful decisions being made at Disney. To start off, I want to talk about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which is currently being eviscerated by critics. It's also the lowest scored of the entire franchise somehow, even beating Crystal Skull, which is impressive. As if this wasn't bad enough, it's confirmed that Indy 5 is also the most expensive film Lucasfilm has ever created, and yes, that includes the new Star Wars movies. Somehow, Harrison Ford punching people costs more than Rise of Skywalker. I really can't wrap my head around how that happens, but that's modern Disney for you. According to rumors, Indy 5 had horrible test screenings, but the director of the movie, James Mangold, has refuted this. But those Rotten Tomato scores don't lie, and this was all likely just damage control in the end. Apparently, the film doesn't take any real risks and tries to satisfy people via fan service, but doesn't do a good job with any of it. The film cost around $300 million to make, and it needs to generate around $800 million at the box office in order to be deemed profitable. Indy 5 is the latest in misfires under the watchful eye of Kathleen Kennedy. And to remind you guys, one of the movies she's greenlit recently is a Dawn of the Jedi movie being directed by James Mangold as well. So it seems like James and Kennedy have each other's backs, and so far it seems like they're about to drop a massive stinker on fans worldwide. So I'm not exactly confident that Kennedy can land a great Dawn of the Jedi movie. After all, we all need to look at Disney's current Star Wars presence to see how horribly she's managed the IP. Speaking of Star Wars, the next story has to do with Disney's Galactic Star Cruiser, which is a massive hotel that promised to deliver the Star Wars experience to guests. The hotel retailed for about $1,200 American per person for one night. And now it's been confirmed that Disney is closing down the attraction a mere year and a half after opening it. It seems it isn't the experience itself that caused the hotel to close, but the fact that the whole thing is just too damn expensive. For a two-night stay for a family of four, the baseline price is $6,000 American. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't even spend that kind of money on any hotel regardless of how much money I have. Also, this cruiser hotel misfire cost Disney $2 billion to create, so good on them spending that much and closing the damn thing within two years. That is such a waste of money, my god. I can't justify that level of spending for a bed in a room with some Star Wars themed stuff around me. I guess Disney figured they could bank on the insanity of Star Wars superfans to keep this massive hotel that offered things like lightsaber duel training, a space cantina, and the ability to take on missions with either the Rebels or the First Order, whatever that means. Maybe if you choose the First Order, you can enjoy a nice night out and commit some war crimes during your stay. It's no surprise that things like the Cruiser are closing down since it was also revealed that Disney's Cruise Line Tour would send children on snorkeling tours to Epstein's Island. Yeah, that Epstein's Island, which is, well, I don't think any level of yikes I say will properly imply how bad that looks. For $60, you too could send your kids to Epstein's Little St. James Island, where they'll learn how to snorkel mere meters away from God knows what that happens on that island. Anyway, we've kind of hit an awkward part in the video with no real reliable segue that makes any sense. So, uh, do you like Miss Marvel? Well, too bad, because she's dead. Written by Zeb Wells and drawn by John Romita Jr., it got leaked to then officially confirmed that Marvel will be killing off Miss Marvel in The Amazing Spider-Man of all things. Apparently, Kamala Khan has been an intern at Oscorp under the wing of Green Goblin, and during issue 26, Miss Marvel will die in what Marvel is calling the most shocking issue of Amazing Spider-Man in 50 years. Since I don't read current Marvel comics because they're awful, I did some digging, and apparently right now anyone who's a mutant can be brought back to life by visiting Krakoa, which is like a safe haven for mutants. Anyway, in the MCU currently, Miss Marvel has been confirmed to be a mutant, and her powers are also different than what she has in the comics. So, likely this is all one big absurd media push by Marvel to push comic sales, but they'll absolutely be bringing her back as well. Her lifeless, rotting body will probably get dumped off at Krakoa, and since she was secretly a mutant all along because they need her to match her MCU counterpart, Miss Marvel will absolutely be brought back to life soon as a mutant, and I guarantee you she'll also have her stupid, boring MCU powers. Marvel Comics has been struggling with sales for years now, and since nobody buys their comics much anymore, they have to rely on 
cheap gimmicks like shocking deaths in order to push sales. Even though we all know it's pointless and they'll just be back since nobody stays dead in comics unless their name is Uncle Ben. And while everything I have presented so far is either pretty bad or downright stupid, this next story is the massive icing on the cake. It's confirmed now that Disney will be removing content from both Disney Plus and Hulu permanently in order to reduce costs for the company. One of the shows leaving is Willow, which literally just aired this year. Meaning the show did so poorly on Disney Plus that it's effectively no longer considered canon and it will be erased from existence. Willow also pushed identity politics like crazy and sidelined its heroic leading man for a lesbian girl boss couple. So it's no surprise really why the show tanked so badly. Other shows being pulled are Why the Last Man, which was cancelled after one season and was in development hell, The Mighty Ducks Game Changers, Diary of a Future President, Marvel's Empower, which by the way was a show focused on praising the female superheroes of the MCU and things like The Princess and far more. You're probably wondering, why is Disney doing this? Why remove content they've already made? Well, it's exactly the same as Warner Discovery did last year already. Basically, if you remove content from your service, you are no longer able to make profit on that content now. However, now that it's removed, you can take that content and file for a tax return on that removed content. So it's a weird little way for companies like Disney or Warner to remove content that's massively underperforming and get a portion of the money they spent making it back into their own pockets. So while, yes, they are still losing money by doing this, they lose less in the long run, but the caveat is that they are not legally allowed to make money on something that they do with this. So that's why it's gone. It's also a scary status quo since now not only can shows or movies do poorly, but the work and legacy of media can be erased for corporate capitalistic reasons. Just imagine working on a show for two years only for it to cease to exist six months after release and you have nothing to show for it. That's kind of insane. However, you might have also noticed all the shows that are being cut by Disney are shows that lean heavily into woke identity politics too. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them do, so I'll stick to what I said because it strengthens my narrative or whatever. So as much as it sucks that content is being removed, ultimately it's because what is leaving is kind of garbage to begin with. If writers and producers stopped pushing moronic stories like lesbian girl bosses and Willow, they would still exist. Ultimately, the outcome of this content purge is a direct reply to the inconsistency and complacency of the talent behind it. Disney won't remove something like Captain America the Winter Soldier because it's great and people love that movie. But when you make garbage like Artemis Fowl that nobody liked, is it really surprising that this is happening? Of course, this has upset many people now because the financial and critical success of products can potentially lead to lower viewed shows becoming erased from pop culture. I personally don't support removing all content that is underperforming on a service, but I'm going to assume that what is being removed is doing so poorly that Disney's content moderation specialists see the loss of these programs as not having a huge blow on the service. But of course, I sympathize that there has to be someone out there who enjoyed Willow or Artemis Fowl. But that's the nature of a cutthroat business like Hollywood, and with streaming becoming more prevalent and necessary, this will just keep on happening. Also, Disney is being sued for misleading reports when it comes to Disney+. Plus. Apparently, former CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, is one of the sacrifices being placed upon the altar for this lawsuit. The lawsuit claims, quote, During the class period, defendants repeatedly misled investors about the success of the Disney platform by concealing the true costs of the platform, concealing the expense and difficulty of maintaining robust Disney Plus subscriber growth, and claiming that the platform was on track to achieve profitability and $230 to $260 million paid global subscribers by the end of fiscal year 2024. In truth, during the class period, Disney was never on track to achieve the 2024 profitability and subscriber figures provided to investors and such estimates lacked a reasonable basis in fact. To conceal these adverse facts, defendants engaged in a fraudulent scheme designed to hide the extent of Disney Plus losses and to make the growth trajectory of Disney Plus subscribers appear sustainable and 2024 Disney Plus targets appear achievable when they were not. Specifically, defendants used the newly created DMED to inappropriately shift costs out of the Disney Plus platform and onto legacy platforms. As part of a scheme to make Disney Plus financial performance appear more successful than it was, 
Defendants aired certain shows that were supposed to be Disney Plus originals, such as the mystery show The Mysterious Benedict Society and the medical drama Doogie Kami Aloha MD, first on legacy television networks such as the Disney Channel. By doing so, a significant portion of the marketing and production costs of the shows were shifted away from Disney Plus and onto the legacy platforms. We see compensatory damages in favor of plaintiff and the other class members against all defendants jointly and severally for all damages sustained as a result of defendants wrongdoing, in an amount to be proven at trial including interest thereon, awarding plaintiff and the class their reasonable costs and expenses incurred in this action including counsel fees and expert fees and awarding such equitable injunctive or other relief as deemed appropriate by the court, end quote. Holy crap, that was a lot to read. So basically, Disney lied to its shareholders about Disney Plus's performance to boost investments, and now it's all coming out and there's hell to pay. Disney responded saying they will fight back to defend their position, and all I gotta say is good luck to them. Finally, to close out the video, I want to look at some virtue signaling nonsense with this article titled, Moana Star Will Not Return for Disney's Live Action Remake. Oh no! What? What happened? Actress, and I'll probably say this wrong, Ali Cravalho has confirmed she won't be returning as Moana for the live action remake. Even though she voiced the character in the original movie, the actress said, quote, As I'm sure you've heard by now, a live action Moana is in the works and you all have been waiting very patiently for updates. So I've written a few things down. When I was cast as Moana at 14, it wonderfully changed my life and started my career. In this live action retelling, I will not be reprising the role. I believe it is absolutely vital that the cast accurately represents the characters and stories we want to tell, end quote. While not being in the movie, the actress said she would be involved with the movie and would love to see another Pacific Island descendant actress in the role instead of her. And yet again, like clockwork, identity politics has struck again with its racial decisive hand. The fact Moana's original actress won't reprise the role shows how insanely brainwashed the Disney fandom has become. Don't forget, they also attacked the actress in the Lilo and Stitch remake because even though she was ethnically the same as the animated character, her skin wasn't dark enough. And this is likely the same thing happening again here with Moana since Ali Cravalho probably doesn't want to deal with the psychotic Disney fans who want to tear her apart because her skin isn't the right shape. So really, for any Disney fan who's upset about this but champion the bullying of the actors behind the Lilo and Stitch remake, I just want you to know that this was your doing and my god is it stupid. I love how when a white character is recasted as a black actor, the color of the character or ethnicity suddenly doesn't matter. But when an actor is chosen to play a non-white character, even if they are the same race and ethnicity, suddenly now it's a problem and we must do better. Oh, shut up. Morons. The lot of these people. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Disney is dying right now, but hopefully all of these cuts will lead to a better financial and content-driven future for Mickey Mouse and his legions of IPs. The Moana thing really does piss me off, though. The double standard of these woke morons is just... Ugh. Anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more stuff like this. Like the video to help the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.